What's your purpose in life and business? What's your reason for doing what you do? Today's episode is about mumpreneur who knows exactly why she is doing what she's doing. Hello and welcome to Season 2 of the Womenpreneur Asia podcast. I'm your host, Krista Good. Through Womenpreneur Asia, I hope to bring you stories of inspiring yet down to women in business across Malaysia and Asia. This episode is sponsored by Reebok Studio. In this episode, I spoke to Singaporean entrepreneur Eve Poa, who is the founder of Believe Beauty Academy, a beauty and wellness business where she helps women look their best using products by Mary Kay. She was top in the personal sales for Mary Kay Singapore Sales Director category last year, despite it being a challenging year due to the pandemic. She also leads her own team of beauty consultants. Many women that I know often start businesses because they were looking for a solution for themselves and Eve exemplified this. She said that she initially stumbled upon the business when she was looking for a skincare solution for herself. Her son often woke up at night and she had to care for him, resulting in lack of sleep, puffy eyes and tired skin. She started searching online for beauty solutions for her skin problems and that's how she got started in this business. To me, Eve is an educator at heart because she uses a lot of live videos to talk, share, and demonstrate the products that she sells. She demonstrates how to put on makeup, how to care for skin, and more on her Facebook page. But more than that, she spoke about how she saw herself transforming from a timid person to someone who now uses live videos to educate her customers. She also talks about using personality tests and tools to help her manage her team of beauty consultants, and she also debunks some of the myths associated with direct selling. She also admitted that running a business helped her become a better mother instead of always hovering around her children like a helicopter mom. She has also given them the space to be themselves and to be independent. Let's get into Eve's story. Welcome to the Womenpreneur Asia podcast, Eve. Hi. Hi, Krista. Thanks for having me today. Thanks. Thanks, Eve, for being on the podcast. Eve, uh, where are you from? I'm from Singapore. Yeah, a uh, little and, red dot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so tell us about the business that you're running now. Uh, how do you get into this business? Okay, so I'm a mompreneur. I'm actually uh, in this beauty business. And I see it as a holistic beauty and wellness business because when I first started, I was also a user of um, this brand and I like the product a lot. So it actually, uh, you know, after liking the product, I'm using it for like six months. I find that I really have the passion to share and also I enjoy attending the workshops. So I decided to, you know, uh, try it and also become a beauty beauty trainer in this area. Yeah. So that's basically my my area of doing is also to uh to uh yeah, conduct workshops. So that's part of my my work. Yeah. Okay. Can can you tell us uh what happened before you got started into this business? I mean, was there something that uh, before this were you in corporate uh and how do you end up uh, being in this particular business? Hmm, sure, sure. So my first job was actually in the uh, um, educational uh, industry. I actually graduated from um, NUS, National University of Singapore. So actually I majored in uh, Chinese studies and statistics. So I've always wanted to go into um, the, you know, the teaching um, industry, education. So I my first job was in um, enrichment center. I, I did um, curriculum planning and also administration work. And after that, I moved on to the media industry. I did uh, promotions and road shows for radio stations. And that's my uh, passion as well to uh, you know uh, do promotions and also to meet people. Yeah, so that's part of my uh, um, the past two jobs that I had before I uh, became a stay-at-home mom. Yeah. And when you were a stay-at-home mom, uh, what were some of the things that were different from uh, being like, you know, in the corporate year? Oh, yes, definitely. So uh, the last uh, full-time job that I had before uh, becoming a stay-at-home mom was actually five years in the local university as a program manager. So I actually enjoyed the work a lot I because it's um educational industry. I love it. I love to uh, promote uh, courses and also to share um, the knowledge and also, uh, you know, some of the um, wellness um, part that 
or I would say that it's more holistic because my area of concern is actually an uh, area that I promote is on cultural part. So I enjoy the, the job a lot on Chinese culture and all that. So the main difference between a corporate job and um, a stay-at-home mom is I think the, the routine because for me as a mother, I find that my time is always, you know, uh, skewed towards my, my, my kids' um, timing and every time sometimes there will be surprises as well because I think kids um, you know when they, they were young they have a lot of like sometimes they fall sick and then I have to be uh, very committed to their timing and I think that's the main difference because everything will have to be uh, focusing on the children and I sort of lost myself because uh, I can't you know do uh, I can't take up any job as well so it's full-time attention on them yeah. And I remember when we were talking before we got on this call, uh, that was some weeks ago, that you mentioned there was one particular reason why you got into this business, right? Uh, mm. I think that one was a very interesting start to how you got into it. You said something about, uh, I think, wanting to also do something for yourself, meaning that in terms of your skincare, was it was, was I correct? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Correct. That was the, the trigger point. Okay. So because I, I have two children um, when they were young, about three, two, three years old, my boy actually had to wake up uh, almost every night because he had some eczema. So I was um, looking after him and I had a sleepless night and also insufficient sleep. And that led to a lot of uh, skincare issues like uh, the eye circle, eye bag, and also my eyelid is rather swollen in the sense that because lack of sleep, right, it's very puffy. So, um, yeah, and also a pigmentation uh, when I was under the sun with him, like running around, I don't put on sun block and all that. So a lot of uh, skincare woes and um, concern. So one on one, uh, one day when the kids were in school, I uh, yeah, chanced upon the Facebook posting of my friend. So I said, hey, why not? Uh, I just approached her and said, I'm keen to try some of the products that, uh, that might help me in my pigmentation and uh, I care issues so I attended the workshop and um, that, that really uh, brought me to you know uh, open up my, my whole uh, yeah mind that uh, oh yeah it's quite interesting because as a stay-at-home mom we tend to focus a lot on the on the children and we just you know uh, neglect um, self-care and self-love yeah and when I went there I find that yeah the, the, uh, the trainers there and the the beauty trainers that were all very kind and uh, they're also most of them are mummies as well so they do understand uh, the journey that we went through so I think that is the trigger point that is the part of the reason why I wanted to give myself a chance to uh, love myself again yeah because when they were about five or six years old I find that they are more independent and I can have more time when they're in school to take care of myself yeah yeah so was it uh, like something that uh, you were really interested in to do something for yourself once your children were slightly bigger? Oh, yes. So when I left the, the corporate world, I actually uh, take up some uh, translation work at home to do when they're uh, asleep. Yes. And I also wanted to do maybe some freelance job or you know, to help my some of my ex colleagues who set up their company to do uh, part time training or to help them to facilitate some workshops. So that's my part of my uh, you know uh, plan when they were still young. So I think um, this uh, opportunity came at the moment that maybe you know it's like a calling or let's say it's something that I always wanted to have. It's like I want to have freedom, time freedom, time flexibility, and yet have. Uh, something to do with my passion. I um, enjoy teaching and enjoy sharing knowledge. And I think self-care and self-love is really something that all mothers should have, you know, to, to love ourselves first. We need to fill our cups to make it full before we can give. Yeah, if not, you find that you're a bit, a bit burned out and tired. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. I, I know that when we started this uh, conversation, you called yourself a mumpreneur. So I guess the I, identification as a mom is very important to you, even even if you're an entrepreneur, right? So you yeah. you, you believe that uh, in your heart. So that this also brings me to this next question, whereby like when you're running this business, how do you uh, balance out um, being a mom and being an entrepreneur? Because mm. they both do take up time, right? The business yeah. and the and being a mother. 
Yeah, yeah, a very good question because um, this was asked by a lot of um, people as well. So for me, the reason why I chose um, to partner with um, this company, this beauty brand, is because they have a very um, a good core value that resonates uh, with me, which is balanced priorities. So that was why I chose um, family over my, my career. Uh, when I, um, yeah, about six years ago, I left the corporate world because I wanted to focus on my family and also one of the trigger point was also I had almost like uh, four years I waited four years to have my first born so I first child you know so I think to me when uh, after I uh, gave birth I, I started to do part-time but I find that the time I was still worried about the baby you know when I was at work so I need to focus I need to uh, you know choose between family or a career so I actually decided to uh, you know choose family and um, when I when I know about this company they actually focus a lot on balanced priorities so i like it that um it values faith faith first family second career third so i was um in a at that juncture focusing more on family but i i have my faith but i think uh, when i joined this company it actually reinforces my my belief in faith as well so i need to uh, believe in myself and also have my spiritual practice um so i need to ground myself first then i'm able to uh give you know uh, to my family to take care of my children and then i have time for my uh, career yeah i am grateful that in in this um company they have um, you know trainings and then uh, help us to do uh teach us to do time management as well yeah, so that's how I managed um to uh focus. I mean to really apportion my time for these three aspects um in my life: faith, family, and career. Okay, so in this in this case, right, I also see that um you do a lot of uh, Facebook Live for oh, yes. for I... this business. Uh, mm. so tell tell us a little bit more about that. Was there something that uh you started recently, or was it some? something as part of uh, your marketing uh, for the online audience? Oh, yes. All right. So uh, it started um, five years ago when I joined um, this company. My mentors and some of the senior uh, trainers, I watched their Facebook Live a lot because uh, being a stay-at-home mom, we have limited time. Like when the kids are in school or when they are asleep, then we have time to uh, watch and learn. So sometimes going down to the office, it's also a bit restrictive because we can only go down on certain days. So I find that you know, watching on YouTube or Facebook Live is it's um Facebook Live is interactive. We can ask questions on the spot. Uh, watching YouTube is for knowledge, so uh, both uh, are good. And then what really inspired me is that um yeah, my, my mentor actually gave us homework to do because after we attended the training, so we have to go for um they will teach us like different ways to market ourselves. You could choose um some people they prefer to give uh samples, you know, like or uh, or meeting people in their house to do. Uh, you know skincare and uh, makeup demonstration and some uh, they choose to do videos Facebook live and some can choose to um, give you know like uh, sending samples out or some might choose to just uh, to just meet up with friends yeah so there are many ways so for me um, yeah my, my mentor gave me a homework so I actually did the Facebook live uh, she asked me to to showcase one of my favorite products so at that time I just uh, you know uh, take up the challenge and um, yeah just uh, but before that, before taking up a challenge, I actually did a lot of, um, you know, like contemplation, like, you know, should I? And a lot of stepping out of the comfort zone because I'm not so comfortable online. So how do I overcome it? I actually did about at least four or five videos, uh, you know, like uh, doing uh, face. I'm not before Facebook Live, I did videos of myself using the, the, the gadget at least five times to make sure that I'm comfortable with the with myself on screen then one fine day I just okay let's do it because I really practice so much that I know what I need to to say and I have scripts and all the point forms there so then finally I just you know go on to Facebook live and just just say whatever I've practiced so yeah that that is the um, practice part is very important <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So because you are Singaporean, uh, you're definitely bilingual, right? At least you speak English and Mandarin. So in your yeah. Facebook live, 
what kinds of audiences are you targeting? Are you targeting the English speaking ones or the ones who speak Mandarin mostly? Okay, so for me, um, it's fifty fifty because for me, uh, I have a lot of uh, uh customers who speak. Mandarin as well. So for for them, I will do a special video, a special Facebook live for them because uh so that they can relate and also you know ask questions. Uh and the other part because of other races like um Malays and Indians, then I'll need to speak in English. So for me, uh I would prefer to do it uh like you know to both markets because like my mom, she's my uh, lawyer customer. <laughs> she's in the 70s. So she's actually speaking in Mandarin. And also she has a lot of uh, friends who are also using the products. So I will need to do it uh, bilingual. Yeah. And also I, I love Chinese as well because I have um Chinese culture and uh, Chinese culture background in NUS. So yes. yeah, so for me, I, I prefer to do it um, bilingual. I mean, like two different uh, Facebook live or videos. Mm. And how often do you go online? How often? Okay, usually I will do it like uh, the first week of the month where we have promotions and that will be fo- focusing on the new promotions to tell them what are the, the you know, best sellers so that they don't miss out, the pro- miss out on the promotions. And after that, usually second week, uh, once at least two times a week, I will do Facebook Live. So some of the Facebook Live were requested by my customers. Like for example, I saw a set of ice bar products and they wanted to know uh, how to do the massage. Then I would um, do a, a video for them or I would tag them to come and watch. So at least two a week, at least, yeah, two times a week. So that's actually quite frequent. <laughs> you actually do oh, go yeah. online frequently i yes. think i saw one of your videos i think there was once i think was it last week uh that you're having champagne was it they having champagne or something <laughs> or wine oh yeah. oh yeah with my one of my um team team member yeah so yeah. we were discussing about um about questions about why women you know i forgot the question let me uh yeah about how we uh you know take up multi uh multi roles as a as a woman because a lot of people say uh yeah you know women you should just focus on one area or some of the different uh different roles that we play yeah yeah something okay. like that we we'll do some so, chat sometimes yeah so is uh that that is definitely part of uh, what you have embraced like, right as a marketing as a marketing strategy for yourself for your business Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, we wish to help women, like, you know, or inspire them to step out of their comfort zone because we, uh, for myself and my teammates, we were once very timid as well. We were once very um reluctant to go on Facebook Live. But I think we encourage each other. And I think I like the, the community support in, in um the company. Mm. Okay, so we've been talking about uh, the business and how you market it and all that. But what was the hardest for you when you first started out in this business? What was what was one of the tough things? Mm, the toughest? Um, I think for me, the toughest would be to... Uh, to follow up on some of the customers uh, who had purchased and then maybe they, they might have, uh, you know, like tried other products as well. So I think one of the challenges is to retain the customer. So usually for me, um, about 40% re- retention, 40 to 50%, but there are also other customers who might be, uh, yeah, you know, to try other products. So my, one of the um, important role is to help them to uh, introduce them uh, to maybe some of the solutions that uh, that might be lacking in their current routine. So I find that this part, we need to do a lot of um, relationship building with customers. And time management is also one of the the uh, challenging part because we have once you have more and more customers, then you need to know uh, how to uh, apportion the time for them because usually I will have my like the key people, maybe the uh, 20 to 30 percent of key key customers that I will need to uh, uh, build relationship with more. Then uh, sometimes the ones that are new, newer, then I would also need to, you know, like allocate time for them. So I, I'm glad that this is one of the more challenging part of this business. Yeah. On uh, so, following up. Yeah. So it means that uh, on one end, you are uh, taking care of the customers that you already have. On the other end, you have to take care of the people yeah. who are new, uh, new customers. 
right? Yes. New customers. So it's a balance between taking care of the new and the uh, existing customers. Yes, correct. And, and balancing true. both. Yeah, okay. Yes. How about your own team? I mean, mm. what about team trainings or uh, team coaching sessions? Are you also involved in part of that? Oh, yes. I am involved with, uh, in team building and also product trainings. So I find that, yeah, there are also, I find that there's a lot of uh, learning learning point um, when you lead a team because it's totally a different story because when you are doing personal sales, uh, you, you can just, you know, build a relationship with your customers and usually uh, we want to give them value-added services and they will appreciate that. Uh, when it comes to team building, it's a different story because when we work with people, uh, we might have, uh, you know, some of the things that we might not see eye to eye too, you know, some of the, we might have uh, some, uh, I would say maybe uh, personality differences. So I, I learned a lot about uh, getting along with different, different types of personalities in this business. And I'm also very grateful to all the national mentors that we have because uh, they taught us some, some tools as well to, to share uh, with us how they uh, you know, uh, get along with different team members like BIS, using BISD and also Anagram as well. So I find that I, I'm also trying to uh, improve on myself. So I find that in this journey, um, what I take away the most is uh, improving ourselves, you know, to, to start from ourselves, to, to be able to uh, see your blind spots. And uh, usually after each uh, maybe mistake or each um, challenging uh, areas, I would need to do reflection and then don't make the mistake again for the next um, next encounter. Yeah. Mm, okay. Then in this business also, there are, I'm sure with any business, there are also some myths or misconceptions. Mm. So I'm sure in your business, it's probably the same too. So what are some of the myths or misconceptions that before you join, uh, you probably have heard about? Uh, are there some that you can uh, elaborate or, or tell us a little bit more? Mm, yeah, sure. So I think about selling because, you know, maybe not everyone is comfortable with selling products. So that's one of the myths because for me, uh, a lot of my friends would think that, hey, how come, you know, Eve goes into um, selling, into, into uh, selling makeup and skincare because it's not in my, in my previous job uh, scope. I have not gone into selling like just mostly media and education. So this is one of the one of the misconceptions that people might say that, oh, you know, she's going to selling and doing sales and all that. But uh, for me, I, I clearly know that I have the passion and I want to share um, the knowledge. So uh, yeah, so I have friends like, you know, they have known me for, for 20 over years, but they, they see me, you know, like um, maybe beginning when I share with them, they are not interested in, in the products or whatever. But after that, after three years um seeing me in the in this business they approached me to to buy the product so i think it's just that they are not comfortable with me you know maybe going to another new industry and then they want to see whether are you you know um uh, sincere enough or are you just you know like playing you know so you say okay just want to try but if you are um uh, perse- i mean you have the perseverance you have the determination in the business i think people will see yeah, so this is one of the one of the myths or people say that you know uh, why go into selling and you know it's uh it's not it, you know they might they might perceive a sales job as secondary as a, a lower uh, tier than other jobs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that is one. And another one is also about um direct selling. A lot of misconception as well, uh, because in our country, uh, you know that there, there could be. Some, I would say, uh, not uh, so ethical uh, companies who had, you know, maybe uh, have some flaws. I mean, they might have flawed this this industry, you know, by uh, having a lot of like scams and all that. So a lot of people are very cautious and skeptical about our business. So we have we have to take up a lot of educational role to tell them that um, it's not what you what you perceive um this company is actually um legal is accredited by um direct selling association of singapore we are just a different business model we do not uh you know charge a lot uh, a high price a lot of people have this misconception that price um products sold from our our this um business model is very expensive yeah so i think uh for me i i would 
share my personal experience. I joined because I want to have the savings and that's why I joined. <laughs> yeah, and I want to learn and um, this company really uh, give a lot of tra- free trainings and free workshops for people to uh, equip uh, with knowledge. Yeah, so these are some of the misconceptions and myths that people may have. Mm. And yes. and when you um, first joined, uh, were there any negative uh, uh, comments or feedback from anyone around? Besides, of course, your friend who thought that, okay, Eve uh, joined, you know, the, the selling business, but uh, any comments from your family or even your close friends? Mm, negative ones, uh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, would think that, uh, yeah, I'm like, you know, uh, maybe focusing too much time on, on, on this. And then, yeah, so maybe they, they might see me on screen with a lot of um, activities going on, you know. So I, I would tell them that, yeah, so these are like, I'll, I'll plan in, a, in advance, you know, my, my timing because they might think that a lot of time spent in, in, in doing this business, um, a lot of activities. But usually I'll tell them that, um, yeah, when we have events and activities, of course, uh, or certain functions or, uh, you know, certain like Mother's Day or Christmas, that, that works, that, that are the peak period. So they might think that you are very busy at that point, at that uh, few, you know, during that few uh, days or period. So I always tell them that, you know, I will have my, my leisure time, my, my leisure time and also, uh, other days that you don't see me, uh, yeah, I'm actually quite relaxed. So, um, yeah, so these are some of the misconceptions. And also, I think some people might think that, you know, when you ask them to come and uh, try the products or to give some reviews, they might think that you want to ask them to buy products. That is one of the things that people are quite resistant to to come. So I'm grateful that, um, yeah, in this, uh, in this business, we have a lot of technology uh, gadgets that help us. Like now we do not need to meet the person, but we can just send a, a virtual analysis link uh, and then they can just do a, a scheme check. And then, uh, yeah, then I will just advise them, but I will not be very hard sell, but I'll just share with them. If you need, then just get some samples and, and try, no obligations, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so I think that probably uh, explains why you are successful in the business. In a way, uh, I I view it like a sharing business. Uh, it's not really to mm, to to hard sell people. Yeah, yeah. So can, tell us a little bit uh, more about your team. How how many uh, uh, team members do you have currently, and what are some of your uh, current activities besides the Facebook Live? Oh, okay. So currently, I started um in twenty sixteen. So I have um currently about five years in the in the business now. About um for my team, uh, about twenty over. Uh, they are selling. They are selling, and they are like beauty consultants. Uh, other than that, I would say another eighty percent in my team of about um hundred and fifty of them. About 80% they are lawyer, you I mean they are product users. So they are product lovers, but they have their uh commitment. So they don't go into selling, but they are uh you know just using the products and sharing with their family members. Uh, so the key people who are selling, uh I have currently three uh three offspring directors, so they have their own unit as well. So um, I find that in, in this business, you need to be uh, leveraging on the system because we have limited time. So if there's a, there's a good education system, then we will be able to groom leaders from it because we need to have at least like three years of you know, coming to the, business, to, to the trainings because um, it's never overnight. So for me, uh, a bit of my background was I also, um, I like education. That's why I think I'm... Learning is never is never like a chore to me. I enjoy learning. So whenever there's like trainings or new mentors to teach, I will always go and and uh sharpen my saw. So I think it's important to always have this uh, inculcate this learning um spirit and learning attitude in in the team. Yeah. So it doesn't doesn't matter that you know you're slow. I also have uh you know my team teammates uh having like full time uh as a full time mom. So Four and five, four to five years in the journey, she is uh, still happily sharing, but she's not moving up the career path. But it's okay. I think it's fine because when the kids are older, I think she can come in uh, to have more time in this business. Mm. Yes. Okay. So why why 
then okay because you are one of the successful ones in this industry and i know i was recommended to you because of that right uh mm -hmm. by a mutual friend then yeah. so i guess part of my question is like um why do some people do well in this industry and why do um, others not do so well i wouldn't say fail mm -hmm. but not do so well because sometimes it's different people with different uh objectives right why they get into mm -hmm. this business like you say, some people just want to use the product. Some people would like to further their own, uh, you know, ambitions and do something like grow a team, grow a business. So why do you think that some people are better at it compared to others? Ah, uh, yes. So, uh... I noticed that I think in this in this uh, business, right, personal personal work, as in your personal selling, your uh, follow ups, your uh, doing your skincare classes, personal work is very important, and also it boils down to your consistency, your persistence, and also your focus. So for me, when I first started, I did not really, uh, you know, um, think of having a a big team or a you know, a lot of follow, I mean, a lot of uh, offspring directors coming out. But for me, I just focus on uh, conducting workshops and also uh, following up with my customers. So personal work, I would say, makes up about 80% of the, the call. I would say the success factors is doing your personal uh, work every day, a uh, consistency over there. And also, um, if you be focused too much on managing people, I think it's quite uh, it's not what this business is all about. I think it's about setting an example, uh, being a leader. That means you lead, your, you lead yourself first. So uh, being a role model, I think it's important because I would see some people, maybe or they might feedback to me that, you know, they want to uh, manage the people. But but if you don't do a self-management of your, of your own uh, habits, right, then you are not able to set a role model for your team members to follow. So some people they they maybe drop half you know half ways because I think the time commitment and also uh the mindset of you need to have a, a business mindset entrepreneur mindset rather than an employee mindset. So for me, I'm grateful that uh my position as a stay at home mom I do not have that that uh, urgency to bring back the the bread you know as in like I need to because. Yeah, so I, I'm really grateful that I said I call myself a mom trainer because motherhood brought me into this journey. So I just do it because I'm also building up the, um, you know, like funds or building up uh, financial financial independence for my future. So nothing is nothing is um forever. So nothing is it's permanent also because we need to know that there could be. Um, things happening that is out of our control, our, you know, so I'm just doing something that, uh, something I enjoy doing and I find that I can build my, my uh, financial uh, independence over here. Mm. And we, we often, I mean, when I often talk to my guests, I always ask them about this. How has the pandemic changed the way you do business? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> because for us, we depend a lot on um, events and physical class to let them touch and feel and then to see the makeover and all that. So uh, when the pandemic hit us around uh, March last year, we had to 360 degree change our whole business model from on-site to online. So I would say from March to end of Last year, about November, about eight months of really a lot of Zoom classes, a lot of Facebook Live, a lot of uh, all online. And it's quite tiring in the sense that I suffered a bit of like Zoom fatigue as well. <laughs> but um, what we have changed is I think uh, we need to see the the opportunity of it. So uh, when during that time when a lot of salons, they were closed, then a lot of customers, they could not go for their facial and all that. So there's actually a surge in our business when they can't go for salons and all that. So I would give them advice through uh, Zoom or video calls. I'll give them like samples, send courier to them and then they purchase products. Um, then we do like, you know, one-to-one -one, uh, coaching on how to use the products. And then they have like, they 
purchase gadgets to replace their uh, facial, uh, you know, monthly facial, and then they do it at home. So there's always, um, yeah, you know, pros and cons to it. And now we are slowly going back to the physical classes. Uh, but online, I will still continue to do because I think we have restriction on the number of attendees as well. So I think what the pandemic had uh, taught us is to be flexible, to be able to uh, yeah, be more um, adaptive to our business. You know, the way we conduct business have to be very flexible and fluid. Yeah. So in, in the time when uh, they couldn't go to the, their regular salon, it meant yeah. that they changed uh, how they did their own skincare at home, right? Their skincare routine mm. at home. Yes. And right. did, did you get a lot of uh, new clients as a result of that? Or was uh, it like yes. more people buying more products? The same people, but buying more products. Yeah. So I could see during that time, that, that three, four months when they can't, they can't visit the beauty salon. Yeah. So they were... Uh, increase their uh the the products that I mean the I would say the variety of products like maybe they will have like more uh micro demabration like you know to do uh scrubbing at home instead of going to the salon and all that yeah so so now it's like we need to have really uh leads lah. so more leads you will also refer uh you know new refer people to us as well yeah so I think we leverage a lot I think for for our business, we leverage a lot on um, technology as well. So I'm grateful that we have a, a strong uh, a gadget, a, a device that can help us to do a virtual, virtual analysis. So we do not even need to meet the person, but we can do consultation uh, off, uh, online as well. Mm. So that helps, mm. a, that's helped a lot during this uh, p- pandemic. Yeah, so it means technology also helped both ways. Uh. One is that yes. it, it um, made it easy for you to access your customers even though you couldn't be in front of them. And another one is that it also helped uh, you go online to educate more people, right? Yeah. Uh, through Zoom, right. through, of course, Facebook Live and all that. Mm, so now yeah. that you've been in business for, you were saying about five years, right? Mm, yes. What have you learned about uh, either yourself or um, the business? Uh, and... And what would you dif- do differently if you had to go back to it five years ago when you first got to know of this company and the brand? Oh, okay. So uh, for me, um, so the, the position, the role that I've actually, uh, you know, personally as a mm-hmm. mother, uh, I would say that the business has taught me to be a better uh, parent as well because maybe I would have spend you know like um, wholeheartedly a lot of time on my kids and all that I find that it's not so healthy as well because sometimes I might use my own uh, perspective I might uh, you know like uh, have some of my uh, own thinking I will actually uh, I, I want them to do this way and all, you know that way and um, so after I become an entrepreneur like you know having my own business I find that I have more time uh, to to uh, realize you know what is my full potential and also give my children more freedom to uh, create their life or to uh, discover themselves as well I think uh, having the freedom is important uh, that give them the time so when I'm a full-time mom I find that I'm a, something like a helicopter mom I find it a bit like helicoptering you know like so a bit too hands-on and I find that they did share with me that they are more independent now so I've learned that in business um you have to be independent and also as a mom you have to give your children uh rooms for for growth and uh development and also for them to train their independence so as a mom so that's why uh I find that the values are very important I learned that um for business, you need to have uh, strong values and why you started this business uh, and always go back to revisit your why because sometimes along this journey, uh, I would say the first year, uh, looking back, right, the first year of that journey is really about learning, about, uh, you know, learning from all the experienced um, trainers and making mistakes and then um, there's not so much on the result for me. I just think that uh, I just want to learn as much as I want during the first year. So the second year, I start to have uh, key people coming out from my from from my customers 
they become like uh, customers, they become product lovers. So from product lovers, when they see me doing this business and I tell them that, you know, you can just observe me, no problem, you know, as and when you find that the time is right, you can just come and join me. So the second year, I start to have like two or three people uh, wanting to join join me in this business. So I, I just keep on doing what I enjoy doing. So I think the first one and two years is the foundation building. And the third year onwards, um, it will be like, you know, going back to your, your revisiting your wife. Because sometimes um, you might have a lot of challenges that can, um, that might derail you from your track and then say that, oh, you know, it's very difficult, it's very tough and a lot of people, uh, management problem comes. You know, I think that's the toughest part of the whole business because product knowledge is easy, product training is easy. I mean, conducting workshop is also easy to me, but the people management part is the most difficult. So in the third year, a lot of challenges come and I'm grateful that um, I, I, I learned from my national mentors, from a uh, national sales director mentor from Taiwan. She, she shared how she used Anagram to, to help uh, to be able to um, let go of a lot of things because sometimes, you know, when you are overly, um, you know, you want to do things in a certain way, that's where a lot of problems come, you know, a lot of clashes, a lot of conflicts come with your team members. So she shared with us how she uses that. And that was how I got to know um, Daniel, our, our mutual friend, on this Anagram uh, tool that had helped me to at least know myself better. I think um, the one of the best takeaways is to know myself better in this journey because I thought I was like that before I, I embarked on this journey. You know, I just want to um, be a mom. I mean, but I know um, when I became a mom, I know that something is missing. There's a, a piece that is missing. Like, you know, I still want to do something that is uh, that is in line with my purpose. You know, I, I still enjoy teaching and uh, sharing. So um, after I did the Enneagram uh, personality uh, check, uh, I mean the test, I find that my motivation is uh, being joyful, you know, being um, happiness and, I mean, trying new things or... Uh, Meeting people, you know, gives me the motivation and joy. So, yeah, after knowing this, there's also blind spots that I need to uh, take note of. Yeah, and usually the conflicts that I have with my team members are due to the blind spots that I'm too absorbed in my 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 personality that, you know, I have a mislook or, you know, like just overlook certain things that might have caused uh, certain misunderstandings or miscommunication with people of different types of personality yeah so I I reflected and you know um embarking on this journey of uh you know trying to change my I mean change myself first yeah you know talk, I mean to see what are the blind spots that I have um you know uh, overlooked and also practicing mindfulness as well every day uh, reflection I think very important in this journey Okay, yeah. so one of the things that just now when you were talking, uh, you said that some of the mistakes that you made, what were some of those mistakes? Could you uh, let, let's, let us know a little bit more? I'd be very interested okay. to know that. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. So for example, okay, before uh, when we uh, embark on this journey, we have different trainings like DISC, right? DISC is about behavior. So I already know a bit on DISC and I'm a, I and S person, a more inspirational and sta uh, stable and steady. I, that's what I, I I behave like, you know. But um, I find that I'm rather low in um D and C, all right. So that's an area of um improvement that I need to learn. So I have maybe come across some team members who are very D, very dominant and very C, very compliant, which. Maybe some of the information that I've given them is not up to their expectation. Because for me, I I just I'm a fo I actually like I like to follow because I'm a follow I, I like to uh you know learn from the, the experienced people or I will follow the company uh, policies and all that. I will not I'm not someone to question the authority. All right. So I just follow and uh yeah, I just do my uh work that is uh that I'm supposed to do. But I have met some team members who are more into uh D and C. So um there's some conflict of uh some conflicts that might have happened that the information that I provided them is not what they want and then they would um you know like think that you know you're not giving them the, the full picture and all that. So 
uh, for me, because if I had you know come across such situation, I would just maybe ask the company for more information. But I think it's all due to expectation. But some some of the team members might expect you to know everything. Yeah, to to know everything. But for me, I find that uh, this is some area that I need to uh reflect on as well. So if I were to meet such people next time, I know how to communicate with them better. Yeah. So these are things that uh to give them the 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 things that they want and not uh the things that I I find that you know uh I do not really need so many information so much I do not need so much information but for some of the people they really need that information before they even want to start doing something yeah so that's the uh thing that I learned okay mm. so uh there's a lot of uh, like how we see ourselves and how others want right to yes. see certain things from their own perspective also. So, yes. okay, right now I want to switch up gears a little bit. I want to ask a little bit more about your family. Tell us about your family. Oh. Oh, <laughs> We've been okay. talking about business for a long while. Let's talk about oh, your yeah. family. Oh, okay. So I grew up in a, in a family of, uh, I mean, it's quite uh, a mixture of uh, educate a bit of education. I actually have um, in my my father's side, I mean, my, my relative, I have two aunties who are teachers, all right, so my, my dad and my mom, they're more in the business, so I'm actually mixed, mixed in you know, education and business kind of uh, family with these two backgrounds, so my, my dad actually uh, and my granddad, they, they started also doing direct selling last time, but it's uh, at that era, they had like, they brought in embroidery, uh, tablecloth, and a lot of uh, art and craft from China and then they, they went to those um, houses and do really direct selling you know they, they drove the car and then do direct selling so um, no, I was young I mean I, I didn't I didn't I was not involved in that but when I was about 11 and 12 years old my mom and dad they opened a shop in uh, Singapore we, in Singapore we call it the Chinatown Point it's a handicraft center so my mom she had she had 20 years of experience in the jewelry uh, industry. You know, Singapore, there's a, there's a famous jewelry shop. She, she was there for 20 years. So from 18 years old, she, she worked there for like until about 40 years old in just one, one industry. Her very, very focused, very, um, yeah, very dedicated. Then they opened the shop when my mom was about 40, my, my dad about 40 plus at, um, yeah, Chinatown Point. So they, they sell jewelry, uh, jade, uh, and also my dad sells the embroidery kind of um, yeah from his business. So so I actually got in touch with a bit of business when I was like twelve years old. I went there to help them to 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 like wipe the wipe the glasses, you know, just uh, do uh package, you know, to to do wrappings and do yeah. So I got a little bit of the first taste of <laughs> doing business when I was like twelve years old. Yeah, so but education wise, I think I was very influenced by my aunt. My I have two aunties who are teachers, they are Chinese teachers, and that was why I think I, I chose to to study Chinese studies when I was in uh, university. And I always wanted to become a, a, a teacher like them. <laughs> yeah. So uh so yeah, so in a way now you are you are a teacher. Yeah, yeah, I'm a teacher, but doing a beauty and makeup, I mean skincare and, and wellness teacher. So that really planted a seed. And also the business seed was also planted, you know, because I, I saw them doing their having their own shop. So when I look back, I think that the two seeds that were planted were really the education and the business seed. <laughs> All right. Then oh yeah. So I actually wanted to go into the teaching, you know, the Ministry of Education. Uh after I graduated from from NUS, so then my my hus my my boyfriend then all right husband now said you have to give it a second thought all right do you want to mark the papers during weekends you know he said are you going to do that I mean it's like so taxing you know a lot of <laughs> yeah extra stress a lot and then work, no, a lot of people work, yeah. work a lot of, and then nowadays you know the teachers they need to have a lot of roles to play there's so many roles to play and then not easy as a as a teacher because of uh. You need to to uh, handle the uh, the parents as well. So he he's more visionary, like he's more uh, long term. <laughs> he thinks uh, way ahead, and then he said better think twice. So I said, oh, okay. In that case, I I did not sign um, the paper. I, I did not commit to become a full time teacher in the in the government school. But I went into um, 
enrichment center called uh, Learning Lab. It was very, very established uh, center. So now, yeah, I spent about one year there uh, doing uh, curriculum planning and also pol- I mean, administration work. Yeah. So I have a, a brother as well, a brother younger, uh, one year younger. He's actually in, uh, he's doing more on the uh, art. He's more, uh, he's an artist. So he, he draws. So I think, yeah, so our family is, uh, my my parents do not give us any pressure. You know, you have to follow, you have to be this, you have to be that. So I'm, I grew up in a family like, they, they give us quite a lot of freedom and I'm, I do not really need to, uh, you know, like mm, go and uh, maybe work or, you know, I'm uh, blessed in the sense that they, they provide for me, uh, yeah, in many areas. It's just that uh, when I was 21, I had um, a health, health scare. So that was like one of the uh, turning point in my life. At 21 years old, I had um, this uh, cyst, ovarian cyst, like endometriosis is a kind of like a black cyst, uh, yeah. So at twenty one years old, I had the operation. So I think that was one of the 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 turning point for me to focus more on well on health and wellness. So maybe when I was young, uh, too, maybe I did not really focus on nutrition and it just maybe um, maybe stress or whatever. So I think I. It actually um triggered you know or inspired me to go into finding more about um, health and wellness this, this this arena yeah so for my you know during the in the twenties when a lot of the the my peers yeah actually just, they just eat whatever they want right but I always tell them that I have I had this endometriosis operation that is like a you know like a cesarean, cesarean kind of operation. So to me, I'm quite cautious with what I eat. And uh, I know, you know, uh, sometimes the health diet plays a part, plays quite a lot of, uh, contribute to a lot of factors and also stress as well. Mm. So a bit of, yeah, a background. <laughs> yes. so, it, so it shows that you did have a bit of both, the business side as well as the teaching or learning and education. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So I do like um teach, uh, teaching and also um businesses. I think I I like to. I'm curious about. I mean, or maybe I like to uh give help people or give uh you know like value add service to people. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So now I want to ask you, what are you most proud of? Ah, uh, uh, most proud of. Okay. Uh, first in my personal, I would say. Per- in personal level and also in a career level. So personal level, I would think the proudest moment is when I yeah became a mom. Yeah. So I think it, it's not easy because to to conceive is not easy for me because I had you know endo, endometriosis when I was young, and yeah. So um the first moment as a mom was really a, a the proudest moment and also uh now seeing them uh grow up and uh when they receive, you know, like some, uh, some educational uh, achievement, but not just academic, but more on a holistic progress kind of thing. I find that, yeah, I find, uh, yeah, it gives me uh, a lot of um, fulfillment on that. Yes. And on career side, um, I have never thought into, you know, like, because for me, uh, along this journey, I just do, you know, whatever my senior taught me to do. And then I just follow. So uh, I was really grateful that last year in the pandemic, uh, just now I shared that uh, there's a surge in the business because of the change in the whole situation. So there's an uh, increase in the in the sales last year for the for that three four months. There was a uh yeah percent uh, quite a huge percentage increase in the sales. So that actually uh brought me i mean that actually uh gave me the i mean i was also very shocked that i got the top in personal sales last year 2020 for uh mary Kay singapore for sales director category so it was um it was a very pleasant surprise but i have never thought of that <laughs> yeah so one of that quite i mean it was also due to my customers um trust and support yeah so that's the for career level yeah and also your Facebook life. <laughs> oh yeah, to to step out of the comfort zone and uh yeah the courage uh, So sometimes we need um 
uh, you know, some uh, affirmation. I think practice. So I always tell my team teammates, I was also reluctant to go for Facebook Live, but you need to really uh, practice and practice until you are so comfortable and then yeah, you know what you want to say. You know, you do not want to just go there and then your whole mind is blank and then you don't know what to say. I think that will be, um, that will actually have, that might backfire because you do not want to go on again because, you know, so I think always tell them practice really is very important. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Then the other thing I wanted to ask you, okay, what about some things like your favorites, right? Uh, mm. Do you have a favorite book? Uh, okay. Yeah. So I actually, uh, I have my favorite, I would say speaker and author, which is, um, Oprah Winfrey. All right. So, but I prefer to watch uh, her, her videos. Yeah. So, but for book recently, I, I read this book, um, start with why. So I, it was introduced by my friend. So it also came at the right time because, um, just now I shared, right. After like three or four years, you were, you know, with challenges that coming up, then you might question that why am I doing this and all that. So I think it, it gives me um bring it bring me back to why I want to do this um business and then uh yeah, so I think it's very important to always uh go back and then read about other uh, successful successful people and how they have their challenges and then uh, how they overcome it and then it boils down to your um the the initiative I mean the first initial um purpose of doing something. Yeah. Mm. What about your favorite uh favorite food? Oh food. Uh because of <laughs> health reason and all that. So um I prefer Japanese food. Uh, I love Japanese food. <laughs> so I love uh sushi. I mean I love healthier food or even vegetarian food. I, I tend to be more plant based now because of yeah, so I, I try not to eat too much uh, animal protein, partly because of my my health. I don't think uh my digestive system is so good at uh, digesting animal protein. So I'm uh I I prefer Japanese food because it's healthier. I can choose like I mean uh like soupy stuff and uh sushi that is not so uh that is not fried. Yeah. Mm. So we are almost at the end of our interview. So what is that one key? takeaway that you want our listeners to remember as a result of listening to us in this one hour oh okay the uh one of the a few things that i want to because for myself um that i realize a lot in this business is uh you know uh, having self-doubt initially uh yeah might actually handicap you in many areas so i'm actually very grateful that uh, in this um, business that I'm in, I have a lot of uh, um, mompreneurs or um, womenpreneurs who will, you know, inspire us to, first thing, I think there are three important beliefs that we need to have. Number one is to believe in yourself. That means you need to know your, your purpose. You need to know, um, you know, uh, what is your calling or what, what are you uh, here, you know, um, what kind of value you can add to people's life? I think it's very important to uh fulfill your your to make yourself more uh to lead a more fulfilling life. I think believe in yourself, and um sometimes uh you know when people have uh, other when you meet challenges and all that, I think it's always good to uh tell yourself that it's a lesson learned rather than you know people are like you know uh you know wanting to to uh you know, do something bad to you or something. So something is a mindset. So mindset, uh, change in the mindset is very important. If you think like it's a growth to you and it's uh, something that you can learn and it's a blessing in disguise, then everything will change. And the second belief is that in a business, we have to really believe in the in the company that you work with or if let's say you're, you're selling something or you're, uh, you have to have strong belief in the, the product or services that you offer and um, you think that it really benefits uh, people around you and also believe in your uh, mentors in all areas the third belief is that because coaches i think everybody needs uh needs a coach to tell us about our, our blind spots or sometimes even if you're doing your own uh learning it's always good to have a mentor to to guide you along so i find that um these three beliefs are important in in my business and uh, believing in yourself in the company and also in the mentors yeah, and also um, always be, be humble and grateful. I think it's very important. 
and have the greed. That means, uh, no matter what, I'm. Mm, is is to all the challenges is to make you stronger in the journey. I think, yeah. So thank you, thank you so much, E, for a wonderful chat that we had today. Uh, I enjoyed listening to the parts where you talked about challenging yourself, getting out of your comfort zone, as well as also uh, remembering what is important. Because I think that's that's the part that a lot of people forget. Uh, not just women in business, but generally everyone. Sometimes uh, we forget why we are there in the first place. And that's why I'm I'm very glad that you mentioned at the beginning that you're a mompreneur. Oh, yeah. And I, I, like, I like how you mentioned that uh, at the very beginning too. So where can people find you if they want to connect with you, Eve? Okay, so I have my... Um... Facebook Facebook page, you can actually type uh, Eve Poin, uh Mary Kay, and you'll be able to find uh, my Facebook page. And on IG is Eve Poin underscore. So basically, when you connect, you can actually um, drop me a DM or yeah, just connect with me. Yeah, there's two uh, platforms. Yes. That you're on. Yes. All right. Yeah. Okay. You do IG stories. Oh, yes, yes. IG stories, I do. So I actually have two uh, IG accounts, but one is more for my business. One is more more on, uh, more on my personal life. So I share, uh, I'm a believer of um, like holistic wellness. So I try to infuse, you know, like uh, lifestyle uh, wellness into my IG stories and also my IG posts on my personal account. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So thank you so much, Eve. It has been wonderful speaking to you. And I think that there must be a, a how should I say, a lot of people out there who will uh, love to listen to your story because I think part of what makes it interesting is that you're a mom and you're also an entrepreneur and uh, you're doing a great uh, way of uh, raising your children as well as uh, growing your business and your team. I must say yes. business and team, right? It's, it's the two things. Okay. Yeah. So thank you so much thank once you. more and we'll see you again. Both Bye. Come. Thank you, Krista. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Thanks for listening to this episode. Get all the links and additional show notes on our website, womenprinterasia.com. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe. It will definitely help me grow Women Printer Asia and have these stories reach out to more women and men. In next week's episode, which will be the final episode for Season 2, I will be speaking to Amita Nandi, who is the CEO and founder of TechWorld, a training and consultancy business in Malaysia. Amita has been in business for decades. In fact, her entire family is in business. Her husband is a consultant and her grown-up sons are also in business. Amita is adventurous, curious and courageous. She was the first Malaysian woman to have participated in the International Silverstone Asian Rally in 1997 and 1998. Amita has also backpacked across India with her young children and husband. When she's not driving trucks in rallies or backpacking around the world, Amita is an accredited life coach who is currently pursuing her PhD in Integrative Medicine from Quantum University in Hawaii. She enjoys working with women, tapping into the Divine Feminine, and since 2018, she has certified some 60 women facilitators on divine feminine work. Besides being a mother to three grown-up sons, she's also a grandmother of two. I bet you're eager to hear from Amita given her list of exciting and bold accomplishments. I'll see you next week for the final episode of Season 2.